Welcome everyone to another episode of The Terrain Studio. I'm your host, Sean Morris. Uh, today on The Terrain Studio, what we're going to do is we're going to start into the, um, basically the geometric shape uh, that is going to be known as our Kashyyyk tree. Um, I have a bunch of materials here before you. I got two cams running, so um, I will uh, hopefully be able to have most of it on, uh, on camera for you. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the preparation uh, for this project. I'm just going to uh, kind of walk you through what exactly it is that I have uh, done to this stage, uh, what we're going to do on this video. And again, the videos aren't going to be overly long because it's going to be a lot of redundant processes but I will show you exactly the steps that I'm taking. Um, and I did mention in the preamble video that this was going to be kind of a laminating process. Um, basically what we're trying to do now is we wanna build up a shape uh, that we can later carve and uh, reduce down to the, to the exact tree-like structure that we're looking for. And we don't have to be very precise in this step. Um, and one of the things that I think I've uh, sort of constructed in the build process for this is that there's going to be lots of room for creativity and later and uh, sort of afterthought, if you will. Um, you aren't going to have to design every element. It's not going to be a very uh, procedural build in the sense that you are only going to have to follow one set of steps. Uh, you can certainly add, subtract things as you go. Um, so please keep that in mind as you're working. Um, we just need to have a rough idea of what we're doing, uh, you know, and by that I mean kind of um, which branch is going to kind of go where, um, how big we're going to make the actual tree trunk, um, exactly the height of the tree, that sort of stuff. We can add and subtract a little bit there, but we are going to want to have a brief idea of, um, of what exactly we want our tree to look like. So let me just grab some glue because it's just off camera. We're going to need some uh, weld bond, so I'll be working with this. Hopefully that's showing up on one of the cameras for you. Um, weld bond is uh, just a really thick PVA. Um, I don't typically dilute it uh, specifically for this step here. Um, you can use uh, wood glue, that's fine. I just find that PVA works a little bit better. If you're using Elmer's glue, it tends to be a bit thinner, um, so you're probably gonna wanna use more, or um, you may have to do a little bit of fixing afterwards, but this stuff tends to work quite nicely. Um, generally can get it. Just find something that's very similar to this, doesn't have to be this exact brand. Um, the next preparatory uh, steps that I've done here is I have used, um, Basically, you can build this entire tree um, out of one two by eight um, piece of one inch um, pink foam. Uh, you can use blue or whatever you have available, but um, two by eight will get you pretty darn close to what I have here. I probably used two or uh, one and a quarter sheets uh, just because I did actually extend the bottom of this a little bit, um, but that's gonna get you a full 36 inches. I'm actually gonna trim quite a bit of that down. So I think one two by eight sheet, that's probably gonna run you around, I think it's about 25 Canadian dollars for that. Um, so it's not a ton of material. Um, that's just for the tree itself. Um, so that we're gonna try to keep a running total of the costs for you guys for this build. Um, just kind of keeping in mind um, that uh, people are on budgets typically when they're making things and people do like to know the cost before they kind of dive in heavily on this. I will also kind of give you some saving, cost saving tips along the way um, if that's of interest to, to people as well. So I'm working on this board today. It's not really nice. It's got like all kinds of lines and you know scuff marks and paint things. Um, but I, the reason I'm doing that is because I want you guys to um, kind of get a sense of how big this build is at all times. So I'm gonna try to keep it in scale um, with the actual video. And so one of the things that I discovered when I was just doing the mock-up was that this gets pretty, um, uh, let's say off balance or out of center uh, pretty quickly. So what I decided that I was gonna do was I'm actually gonna build this tree on a piece of MDF. Uh, so I took this piece of MDF, I think it's about 16 inches or so um, by about 12 inches. Um, and this is going to actually be um, laminated to my finished uh, board when I'm done. But what I think I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to um, bolt it down uh, later. And that way I can actually work on the tree separate from the table um, and I can work on the table separate from the tree. And then at the point where I need to kind of blend those surfaces together, obviously when this goes down uh, and I want to sort of account for this, um, this, this lip here, if you will, um, I'll be able to do that. Now, the nice thing about that is, just grabbing a piece of foam here, um, that this is going to marry up quite nicely uh, to um, 
to a piece of half inch um, foam. And so there's a very small uh, lip here and I'm gonna be able to account for that um, in the later build. So that's gonna help me account for that gap uh, quite significantly. Um, and the reason that I wanna have this is because I'm gonna have a beach and I'm going to use this as a buffer for the, the resin in the water. And so having this to sort of slope up later um, will fit with the beach. It will also fit with uh, accounting for the tree gap. So all of that is some things that I wanna kind of consider in this, uh, this build process. But uh, certainly the MDF is going to give me um, a nice weighted base for this as I'm working and as I get sort of uh, up into the air, um, it's gonna to help account for the, the off balance, which I definitely experienced in the mock-up. So what I've done at this point here is I've cut a series of uh, shapes. Um, they're all either, uh, most of them are just, are just squares um, of various sizes. There is a few uh, more rectangular pieces at the bottom. Um, so these ones here at the bottom are um, 10 inches uh, this way uh, by 12 inches here. And I have uh, three or four of those. Uh, then I went down to 10 inch squares. Um, then I went down to uh, eight inch squares. So I have a series of, uh, of eight inch squares here. Let me just try to find that on camera. And again, just one inch thick. So I've cut a whole stack of those. They're sitting there kind of in the forefront. Let me slide those aside. Um, then I went down to six inch squares here. So again, just uh, putting those on top, you can kind of see. Um, and then I went down to four inch squares here. And uh, that's all I'm working with. Um, it's gonna be quite a bit of, uh, it's, it's a heavy transition between here and here, um, but these are going to be the, the branch extensions. So if I can grab a marker for a second. Um, the, uh, the branch extensions uh, are probably going to be a series of concentric circles like that. So as I move up through these, I'm gonna be shaving and shaving and shaving and shaving. And so I'm able to transition within this. Um, I'm not gonna go from a, from a six to a four like that. So if you can just imagine a series of concentric circles, um, I have a large stack here. You guys can probably see that there. So these will be the branch extensions. And so through that, through the course of this distance, um, we'll transition. Um, likewise with the six inches, likewise with the eight inches, we'll do all that, um, that, that same sort of, um, you know, conical shape as we move up through the branches. So to get started, what I have done here is I've just actually glued um, and, and laminated. So if you hear me using the word lamination, um, this is what I mean by that. I'm laminating these pieces together. So now this is a very solid, rigid structure. Um, I'm not so concerned about uh, gaps here on the end. You'll notice that there's just one here. And what that is, and this is something I talked about before, is when you get foam, I'm just gonna use a sheet, um, it's very hard to see, but there's a very subtle uh, bend. And the longer the run, the more likelihood uh, it is that you'll have a little bit of a bend. And if I were to place this on here and do the overhead, can you see, let me just try to get it completely vertical. There you go. You can see where the gap actually appears. And it's very subtle. When I laminate it together, I may be able to account for that. But if I leave it just naturally um, lifted, it will have a little bit of a bend. So you'll run into some pieces um, that will have a bit of a bend. So some will sit uh, nice and flat, but if I put these two together and keep it vertical, you can see that there is, again, just a couple spots where there is a little bit of a bend. So when I'm putting the pieces and I'm laminating them together, you may get some of those um, lifts on the edge. It's not really gonna be an issue because we're gonna later shave and cover all this anyway. Um, so what we're really looking for is nice, strong adhesion, um, at least strong enough that they stay in place. Um, little lifts on the edge aren't going to be an issue at this point. So you can see what I've done here. I've sort of taken this piece, I've, used, I've sort of centered it on the MDF, um, and I've started to move in this direction. And so here you can see that the base is going to be slightly sloping um, in this direction. If I give you kind of... Oh, 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 sorry about that, folks. If I give you some profile shots here, you can see that the tree has started to move in this direction. If I give you the reverse profile, you can see now that I've created an overhang here. If I give you this direction here, you can see just a small profile. The overall tree structure, if you remember, we're going to kind of do something like this. We're going to slope it. We're going to go up. So we're going to kind of have something like that. 
And so the tree is going to come, here's the, obviously here's the base, and it's going to move and then kind of slope back. Then probably what we're going to have is an outward projection like that, and probably an outward projection like that. So we're going to have some sort of look, you know, kind of a little bit of an S curve in there. Um, this will go down to beach here, and then back here we're going to go into rocky like structures. And then we'll end up having some smaller pines and they'll sort of filter there. So that's gonna be kind of, I know it's off center for you guys, but um, that's gonna be kind of the look. So S curved tree sloping down to a beach, rocks on the back, and then, you know, we'll fill in all the other stuff with, with nice, um, you know, natural bits. So what we're gonna what we're gonna do? Uh, I'm just gonna show a couple of these because again, like I said, it's a redundant process. I've basically explained everything that you need. You're going to want to, and if you can, try to keep all the the flat portions up. I just usually keep the writing side down. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, however, what ends up happening is if I use all of the same direction, I know that the curve or the bend is all in the same direction. So when I apply my weight. Um, the weight's going to take all the flex out in the same way. If I were to do it like this, and let's just say for example it was flexed this way and flexed this way, I'm going to sandwich one piece but I'm going to actually delaminate the next layer. So try to keep it all in the same direction um, if at all possible. So we're going to actually be moving up towards the camera. We're going to probably jump out of this camera's uh, line of sight here. So I'll make a slight adjustment there just to give you guys a little bit more of the build. There we go. And uh, there we go. So uh, we'll work in this direction and we're gonna kind of um, figure out how much of a curvature we wanna have before we um, are gonna start bringing it back. So I'm gonna dry fit everything. And to kind of uh, keep account for how much um, lip I wanna have, um, I've basically been using a half inch sheet for like a spacer. So, you know, just sort of putting it on there, and it's okay if it's off a little bit. Again, this is not uh, precise work because we're going to be um, shaving so much of this. It's not really going to, uh, to matter in the end. We're gonna do a lot of sanding. We're gonna do sculpting on the end of that as well. So I'm just loosely fitting that on. I could eyeball it truthfully. I'm just showing you what, I, I have been eyeballing it. I'm just showing you what, I, uh, what you can use if you wanna keep uh, some consistency in there. Now, you can cut as many or as few of the particular shapes as you like. There's no um, no method in terms of this. What you want to keep in account is how big do I want or how high do I want the bulk before I start splitting into the small branches. Um, and so I'm going to make this pretty beefy um, because I want to add some treetop structures and the more meat I have at the top of the tree, um, the more room for error I have in terms of I can shave it down. Um, if I may make it too thin, too fast, um, my tree gets pretty spindly and I may not be able to put as many structures up into the branches as I would like. So um, what I'm trying to do here, if I can turn on the side, you can see that I'm bringing it up here and then I have this little bit of a bulk out as well. So. Um, Keeping in mind, we want to have that S curve. So let me just start slamming some pieces down here. Again, this is from a dry fit standpoint, so I can only go so far um, before it starts to get uh, too crazy. And I will probably, hmm, what can I use? Perhaps I'll just use the well bond as a, as a well, because when I'm using my hands to talk, I'm probably not going to be able to hold this. So again, pushing it out this way, it's got a pretty significant overhang. If I'm looking at this from the bottom of the tree to where it is now, we're almost out about five inches. Uh, you guys can't even see, but I'm talking about the threshold here. So we've moved out about five inches um, at this point. And I have it all sloped in one direction. Now, let me just turn it back this way. Lots of moving parts here today. This is fun. Um, when I'm going to build my platforms, I kind of want to have uh, not many at the bottom here. What I'm actually going to end up doing is kind of building a staircase almost. Some sort of, and it might be a, a rock staircase to be quite honest, um, up to about this level here. Then what I want to do is I actually want to build two large platforms here. They're going to be offset. Um, and so the reason I'm kind of swooping it out this way is it gives me a very symmetrical shape to work with. 
Um, if I have a bunch of weird angles, it may be a little bit more difficult. But if I have one platform here where my hands are, one platform here where my hands are, then I know I'm gonna have two really easy spaces to work from. I can have my stairs come up to the first one and then a small lift or uh, not lift, but a small rise up to the next platform. So I think I kind of like the shape that I'm at. And if I look at the side profile here, we have that real sloping um, profile there. You guys should be able to pick that up in the secondary camera. There you go. So I think that's probably about out about as far as I want to go. Now, I can continue dry fitting. There's um, two schools of thought here. You can dry fit the whole thing, which I've done once. However, I can guarantee you, um, I'm of the type of mind that the first initial plan is probably not gonna work. That was kind of like, okay, yeah, I can do this, um, but now how can I make it better? That is definitely where I'm at right now. I can continue building the rest of the tree. However, what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna have to take down the top portion at, at a very minimum, and then I'm gonna have to work backwards. So if I feel quite comfortable with this, and I feel that this is gonna kind of determine the direction that the rest of the build's gonna go, I think I'm quite confident to actually go ahead and solidify and add this onto my tree. So that's where I'm gonna go right now. And I just wanna show you this process anyway. So what we're gonna do is we know that we're going to walk it up concentrically here. It's gonna be about a half inch each time, and we're gonna move in this direction only. So it's really easy to replicate. So what I wanna do now is I wanna pull off these, this, this five inch layer. Just gonna set that down, orient this so that I can start working with it, and now I'm gonna start adding on those pieces. Um, this is a very easy process, but I'm just gonna give you a couple tips anyway. Um, so what I do is I will typically just put the glue on one uh, piece. If you put it on both, what ends up happening is you get a lot of glue. Um, weld bond's one of those glues that does take a significant amount of time to dry, uh, overnight's uh, usually fine, but it does require a little bit of airflow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a couple pieces at a time, and I'm just gonna put a big glob in the center. Uh, there you go, one inch thickness. Couldn't it be any more display. This was a coincidence, by the way. Um, I'm gonna put it on here. I'm gonna take my tool, popsicle stick is fine. This just happens to be a tool. It's got a little handle on it, it's nice. I'm going to spread it out as much as I can. I don't need to go crazy to the edges because when I put the weight on it, I'm gonna use about an eight pound weight. Um, when I put that on, it's gonna squirt it out anyway. It's gonna to get to the edges if I notice that um, before I put it away to dry. I'll just clean those edges up. The reason I do that um, is because when I start shaving and using my sandpaper and stuff, the less amount of glue that I need to go through in terms of big globs, just the easier it is to sand. Um, so we'll spread that out. We'll give it a few minutes to set up. We'll go ahead and set that in place give it a little bit of a press, we'll leave that, we'll work on the next one, and we'll add and add and add. You'll notice that I only did, what, two, four, six, about seven inches the first time. I'm gonna wanna build this tree in pieces like that because what ends up happening is the further out I go, if I'm putting weight, I'm actually gonna be tipping the piece, and I don't wanna delaminate anything. So if I can kinda keep it more squared up, I'll put the weight directly over the center, um, let that, part dry then I'll come back you know um, I don't need to give the um, I don't need to give this entire thing 24 hours to dry before I can start working on it but I want to give that first um, bit of glue maybe six six to eight hours to set up then I can start working on my other pieces another thing you can do if you do want to speed the process up a little bit is once you get this piece here done you could start dry fitting the next one on it's gonna be very light lightweight and if you're careful you can move those over and you can start working on those pieces almost as a separate piece let that dry and then later on just make that one lamination of the you know the stock to the trunk um, and you'll be fine. I probably won't do that just because I really wanna look at the tree all as one section. So I certainly won't do that for this build, but if you guys are working at home, that's something you can definitely uh, be doing. So let's go ahead and get some glue onto uh, this first piece. We're just gonna dump out a big glob. So hopefully you guys can see that, I think you can. Do, do, do. We're getting down to about a quarter bottle here, so it'll just take us a second to have this flow out. There we go. Perfect. So, pretty generous with the glue, of course. Um, and then we're just gonna start moving it around. If you end up getting too much on one piece, just simply use your trowel, grab it off, put it on a neighboring piece, you'll be fine. Again, wanna get it to, I'm okay to go to the edges, I just don't wanna have big globs on the edges. So I typically just, um, I do usually put it all the way out, but I'm just careful to make sure I'm pulling to the outside um, and not, uh, not pouring to the outside.
Perfect. All right, I'm going to uh, just leave that. So weld bond uh, becomes tacky the longer you leave it. As I said, air exposure helps it dry quite quickly. Um, so it's not going to dry up like an Elmer's glue. Uh, if you do the same test with an Elmer's glue, um, I think you will see a significant difference if you're kind of wondering like, why buy this PVA? Is it really worth it? Um, do a quick glue test. To, I'm sure you got some Elmer's glue or, or some craft glue kicking around. Um, just try it out and, and see the difference in terms of how quickly um, that other glue solidifies. Uh, this piece here appears to have no writing on either side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up another couple of these. We'll do the rest of these on camera for you guys. But as I said, I'll, I'll come back and show you the, uh, the remainder of the steps, but this is just effectively what we're gonna do as a repetitive process. You can always fast forward through this section, but you guys can just, just see the technique once and, and then just um, replicate it, that's all. Popsicle stick, like I said, works perfectly fine. Don't buy yourself a special tool if you don't have one or make yourself a tool, whatever you want. It's effectively just a butter knife with an angled offset handle. So just makes troweling out quite easy, quite nice. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start laminating uh, the pieces back on. So it's a pretty simple process. We're gonna go ahead and uh, just find that, you know, whatever threshold we want. Um, obviously, I have gone to the edge, so I'll have a little bit of glue uh, overhang there. It's not really going to be an issue. Again, it's spread out thin enough that I can sand through it. Just wanna avoid the big globs. So just giving that a little bit of a press in place. And just having a look at that half inch threshold. Um, this is a time here where you can, again, use that spacer if you want, just to kind of make sure that you're getting it somewhat centered. There we go. Um, and then I'm just gonna keep adding pieces on as we've uh, discussed. Got a little bit of glue, squeeze over the edge here. There we go. And as we apply the weight, we're going to get some squeezing out of the edge as well, and we can uh, we can clean that up. Again, not a massive issue. It's not going to create any um, real issues for you. It's just something that if you can remember to clean up, or if you can clean up, um, it's just something you don't have to um, encounter subsequent steps. There we go. And you'll notice that I'm not doing a lot of like pressing here. Um, I want to make sure that I get the shape first, I'll apply the weight and then I can kind of do small adjustments as well as one thing about this glue, it'll really allow you to, uh, to have some uh, great working time. Again, I want to be able to have this tree look quite organic, so having it all not the exact same space will just allow me when I'm doing the shaving to, to ensure that I don't have to put a lot of variety into the, to the sanding step. I'll already have some naturally built into the geometry of the tree, so. Okay. Well, that's that. Let me just rotate this around again here on camera so you guys can see. There's our kind of our overhead there's our profile sort of poking way out. Um, just to kind of give you a sense, you know, this is the this is the threshold of the, the tree there versus you can see my hand is just disappears. 
it's a significant portion you guys can see how far out that overhang comes um, so that's that's a intro, just going to give it an interesting profile, you know, um, depending on how the tree is oriented on the actual table. Um, it may be even oriented something like that with the beach coming in here. We're going to have a little bit of a jutty come in here. Um, that's where the beach is going to extend in. So I'm going to use the profile of the tree to kind of, you know, dictate the shoreline um, around that. So it's going to be uh, quite interesting to have that, uh, that, that tree sort of profile that beach. So that's all sitting there. You'll notice that it's staying perfectly fine. I don't need to apply a significant amount of weight. Um, I am going to apply some. I actually have the weight right here. So if I go and apply the, the weight, I want to make sure that it's not going to tip too far. And I think I'm going to be okay uh, there. It's setting nicely. I want to make sure it's not going to tip the tree over. Now, if it is not on a weighted base like this MDF, and I were to apply that, this is going that direction. Um, trust me, even the weight of the uh, foam when it gets to a certain height will actually start pulling the tree over. So the weighted base is a great idea. Even if you don't plan to permanently attach it, if you just had a working base and you were willing to go in and just cut that off at the bottom, uh, later because um, what you can do is you can get a blade underneath and you can delaminate that uh, weld bond if you're able to kind of to kind of cut that that bond between the MDF but um, I'm just gonna leave this now uh, this is going to set up there that's just gonna keep some weight and pressure on there I got a couple I can see a couple lifts um, well really just truthfully one and one but that's just again the nature of the foam uh, those lifts are not something I'm really concerned with in fact they actually do let a little bit of air flow in and so those pieces will typically dry a little quicker so um, that's what we have there folks so I, I'm gonna try to keep all these videos to 30 minutes or less which I think I'm right on pace for so a personal goal of mine um, but expect to have another video tomorrow as I said Saturday Sunday Wednesday so we're gonna try to shoot for that um, if I don't do one on Wednesdays, then I'll come back with an extra on the weekends just because the build's going to be happening. Um, next weekend is going to be a bit tricky for me because I'm actually going to be away. Um, so I, what I'll try to do is try to front load in the week. So maybe two through the week and then I'll try to hit you guys back uh, early in the next week. So the plan is to kind of get two, three videos up a week for sure. Um, just sometimes I'm physically not here in the studio, so it's a bit tough. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll get this build happening. I just noticed that we had a little bit of it's just and this piece is trying to migrate on itself so and, and that will uh, that will happen as I said just give it a few minutes because what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the squeezing of the glue to come out um, so that's your opportunity if you want to come in and just sort of um, clean up some of that um, again because the glue is thick it's gonna have a little bit of a float so the more weight I put on it um, the, the more um, the ability for it to kind of to kind of shift if I don't have the weight on um, then it's it's not going to delaminate. It's not going to really do anything. I like to have the weight on for a little while because what it does is it does put that that pressure down and it does squeeze that glue out. So you don't have to leave this on for 12 hours. Uh, you can leave it on for an hour or so just to make sure that it gets that initial tack. Um, that glue that squeezes out on the edge will dry and that will make sure that the pieces aren't going to shift anymore. Then you just leave it and let the actual um, rest of the, uh, the adherence happen. Um, so that doesn't need to be on there for a significant amount of time. In fact, it's already squeezed out what I need to. I don't really need to go ahead and keep that on there. If you want to just put a little bit of weight, just like, um, like let's say for example, I'm going to put this weld bond on here. Um, this only weighs a pound or two at this point because it's uh, fairly empty. Um, that will be enough weight, again, just to keep that um, from shifting uh, too far. So I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave that on there. Got everything squeezed up. I'll clean this up off camera. Really liking the profile that I have there. It looks quite nice. Um, now the next stage when we come back is, you know, starting to make the tree go in another direction and sort of bringing that S curve back and what that's going to look like and how we're going to create branches and things like that. So that is all for a future video, folks. I'm just going to move this so it's not in my face for this minute. Uh, but I really appreciate you guys uh, checking out this build. I know there's been a lot of interest, a lot of comments, probably more than uh, any previous build. Um, so hopefully that means that you guys are looking to be inspired and potentially creating your own uh, Kashyyyk trees or similar uh, projects. So uh, until the next video, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.